I've got this huge canvas. It is a four by eight. And usually I do these horizontally, but I think, I think I'm going to do a vertical. I was trying to decide if I was going to put the four by eight on my cleat wall, but I think I'm going to just put it on, stand it on my easel because I'm going to need a stool to stand on whether or not um, I, I put cleats on it or not. So, but I think I'm just going to put it on my easel and work from there. So here goes. Let me see if I, how strong I am. All right, all right. Here we go. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna need to get a stepping stool. I have one for my grandkids in the bathroom, so I'll go get that and I'll work on that. And I will first sketch in my imagery and then I'll color block like normal. This is going to be a fun one to do. This is going to be really hard to videotape because you're not going to be able to see the whole thing, <laughs> but I'll show you my reference. So of course my uh, computer, my computer's working fine, but my printer decided to um, just not cooperate with me today. So this is going to be my reference and I got it off a free site for um, photography, thank you very much. And this is going to be what I loosely build my drawing from. So I'm gonna have to leave my computer open and splash paint all over my computer until I can get a color copy of this reference printed out. I don't know what I was thinking. It's not gonna be the little potty chair, the little potty stool from my bathroom for my grandkids. It's gotta be this little ladder, which I had in my studio all the time. And then I turned around and looked and I went, oh, this is gonna be perfect because I will be able to, bye, do the top of this painting. So I think that's gonna help me. I had to go get coffee because I can't start anything without a fresh cup of coffee. It's a ritual. The apron is already on though, so I can, I can get started immediately. Had to try out to see if you could see. So I'm going to start my drawing. Um, I'm going to turn on my YouTube. I'll silence this and uh, you can see what I do with, with my chalk. I don't know what I want to watch or listen to, really. All right, we're going to listen to Laura from Garden Answer. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. A couple well, of fun visit. things before we jump into the questions. Well, Number I one, can. I'm waiting. So I don't know if you can see it, but I have chalked in the basic lines. So I, I'm looking at my, um, my reference loosely. I'm chalking in. So now the next stage is I use a burgundy paint. And the color I like to use, and of course it's in the drawer that is impeded by my camera. There it is is um, quinacridone crimson. I don't know why, I just like to use that. So because this painting is so big, I will use a, a pointy brush, a fairly large one, and, and 
lock in. And at this point, I'll get a lot of um, shape and composition and identify where my main trunks are, things like that. Thought I would change the angle so you can possibly see a little better. It's so big, I think it's gonna be hard to do on camera, but it's gonna be great. So at this point, I am using the paint right out of my jar because I'm almost finished. So I'm gonna have to buy some more of this because um, I wouldn't normally just, you know, be dipping into a big, thick, so I'm trying, um, thing of paint. So I'm trying to get everything off the walls of the jar and thin it so that I can just, it's so that it's fluid enough that I don't have to keep going back for water. I, 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 I'm not going to want a really dark line. Um, whatever I get is going to be fine. It's going to let me see it. But paint is expensive. Paint is expensive. Sorry, you had to see the top of my head there for a bit. Paint is expensive and I, I want to use it up. Add a little more water. Get the sides. Oops. That's why I have old carpets just dripped all over the carpet. Okay. Here goes. smaller trees I may actually do you know a really good press on my brush to um, and, and completely fill it in usually I just draw the outlines of the trees but I might really do a really good pre press and really draw that in um, so that I don't get confused as what what are little tiny trees and what are the bigger uh, more substantial trees decided that I really need to see in my sketch a little bit better um, those dark branches that I really want to captivate and divide the top of this canvas. So I'm going to add a bit of Prussian blue to my um, crimson and really identify the divisions of the painting that I want to do. Uh, those dark branches in the top. So I've got a smaller little jar. Sorry, top of my head again. I got a smaller little jar that I'm going to put some darker cut the, the Prussian blue in. I don't use black um, in my acrylics paintings, although I am starting to experiment with it a little bit in some um, abstracts that I'm, I'm trying. So here goes. I'm going to show you uh, me using the Prussian blue to identify on this painting some of the divisions.
me. What you're seeing is the division of the branches and I'm creating negative spaces up there. So um, I like that the, the dark, I've kind of made kind of a triangle of dark. I'm not gonna cut the canvas in half and do all these dark branches like over on this side sort of thing. This will be a little bit, I've, I've done a circle. I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of where my light source is coming from, the backlighting. So that's gonna be really interesting, but I do enjoy what's happening here. Now I'm seeing, so you see this, I want you to really focus. See this, that space, that space, that space, and that space, they're two equal. Do you see that? I'm seeing that in the camera. So I'm gonna to have to go back, back in and add a couple more branches to divide those even more so that I'm not making all my divisions of branches equal. I am loving what's happening. It's hard to see with the camera and the light, but I am like what's happening in here and all the divisions and the shapes, but I am trying to be very conscious that I don't make things too equal like there. Oh! My husband just terrified me. <laughs> so that is what I'm trying to do when I divide the canvas. Hi, sweet pea. Sorry to interrupt your video. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Look at, what do you think? It's gonna be- It's big, it's, but I can't see what it's, well, I can see that it's gonna be trees, but. Well, you, yeah. I don't have your vision. No, but do you see how interesting the divisions are on this side? I was just saying that in the camera, these looked pretty even, but actually when I look at it like this, it must have been the angle that I was videotaping. They don't look so even anymore. And, and, and Doug thinks it looks great. Do you think it looks great? I think everything you do looks great. <laughs> He's really good. <laughs> isn't he? All right, go back to work, honey. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Bye, honey. Bye. Okay, so now this has to dry. I'm gonna let that dry, and I have to get a new and fresh palette ready anyway. I've gotta see what else I have to do in the studio today before I get to the color blocking stage. So the color blocking stage, I make a lot of decisions in that stage, guys. It's not like um, I'm not, putting down final strokes at times. and But I do find that it becomes uh, kind of a, oh, how do I want to say? Um, the, fre the very, very, very freshness comes at the very end of the painting. Once, once I've got it fully color blocked, a lot of decisions are made, a lot of uh, light sources and, and strokes are done, but I will come back in at the end and sharpen things and push and pull a little bit, push things back in the distance and crisp things up in the foreground. So I'm super excited about this. Can you tell? I'm super excited. I really hope it works out. So at the end, I'm not uh, embarrassed. Okay, my husband just brought me a grilled cheese. It was really, really good. So now I have energy. I'm gonna start. This format is so tall that I'm not gonna be able to fit the whole thing in the video. So um, that's okay. You can watch what I do. I'll try to, I'll, I'll, I'll try to show you everything, but um, if I go back up, if I go to the top, I'll stand on the stool and I'll raise up the camera, okay?
asking in this mid-range where it's really easy for me to reach and I'm building these trunks and the background. So I don't paint the background first, I paint it kind of last and around. I paint them kind of the mid-ground first. But I'm also noticing on my camera that the image is backwards. So I'm gonna to try to figure out how to reposition the camera for you so that you're getting it. Well, maybe, maybe it's not, but this should be, maybe it's right. Maybe it's right. Okay, I'll just continue. <laughs> I'll just continue.
Sorry about that, guys. My filming isn't so great here. You cannot see half of what I'm doing, but I promise it'll get better. Okay, so that is all I can do on this project for today. I need fresh eyes. I'm kinda, I do like it. I love it, um, but I need fresh eyes before it gets muddy and I don't quite know what to do. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna let it dry. Acrylics get a little darker. I'm gonna see what it tells me to do the next time I'm in the studio. Join me in like a, a second <laughs> when I add to this video.
So there it is, fully color blocked. Now I'm going to leave it to dry for a few days because that will darken some of the acrylics. Look at, I can't even get it in. My, my studio is not wide enough for me to get it in on the camera. Here we go, we're going back. So I'm gonna let it dry. I really am going to want to pull some of the trees forward and it's going to be a great painting, I think. So I hope you enjoyed the color blocking of this at some point because it's going to take me quite a bit of time to like figure out all the little details in this. I don't think I'm going to film it because it'll make me nervous, but you'll be able to find it um, on my website, uh, juliaveenster.com. And we'll see. We'll see. I'm saying that now. Maybe I'll be able to um, film it. But if you notice, I've got really, in compositionally, I've got really, really strong verticals, right? And I've countered it with all of the branches. And if you notice, I kind of, the branches start here and they kind of do the top third or quarter there and divide that up. So you're actually pulled back in and down through the drawing, through the painting. This red patch catches you. So you stay kind of in the center of the painting and you start looking around. Down at the bottom, I have done some very strong vertical strokes. And that kind of pulls you back up and into the painting. So, I again, I have to leave it for a few days to see where it's going to tell me where to go. I'm really loving the blue in the background, so I may end up putting more of that in. If I get around to filming that in the next few days, I will. If not, I'm going to put this video up because this is the one I'm excited about about showing you. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Follow along. Give me your comments. Maybe you're seeing something that's really glaring. I will be painting around the sides and then I'm going to have to lay the painting down to do the top and bottom. But tell me what you think. We've got a variety of shapes and darks and lights and contrast and value in every color. And there's, there's my palette. Hot mess. But this is a great palette actually to start another painting with. I can do all the color blocking with this and use this up. If I had any prints to embellish, that would be a really great thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video and come back soon for more.